Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose what we're, ro- we're rolling, right? No, oh, jeez, I didn't know we were rolling. All right. Yeah, that, big time, big roll. Dennis stuff was good. I wish we had that on here. Well, next time. Yeah, you'll you'll go again. They got if they if you want a dentist story, roll it back to 2017. You'll get about 17 episodes worth. Ooh, really? It was Harry. Root Canal. Well, I, had, I didn't tell this part of the Canal dentist, Street. so I'll just relive the whole thing. I went to the dentist on Saturday. I literally have diarrhea, like in my like that that weird peanut, like a baby shit. Well, he can't fix that. Like a smeary peanut buttery shit. Oh, God, Sagalo. Turn it down. Turn it over. I forgot to. It, I'm usually airplane mode, it. but I, I I booked Sagalo for something. And then the next day, text is always like a oh, just looked at my calendar. Ah, uh, a lot of calendar. Yeah. No one looks at the calendar when they're texting. Yeah, yeah. Well, some people do. Calendar girl. Half of us do. All right. Anyways, I went to the dentist Saturday. Hadn't been to the dentist since uh, October. You're so nervous. You're so scared. I'm traumatized from childhood. And uh, everyone talks about my teeth. They're crooked. They're crowded. They're yellow. My father's gay. But cleanest teeth. You can eat off these teeth. (laughs) <laughs> they they went in there they with the pick and the and the and the floss no blood she's like I'm turning it down that's how clean your teeth wow. are your gums are perfect they're just all wacky yeah yeah they're they're ugly but you could be ugly with good health sure it's like a pet cemetery where you really scrub the stones mm. huh well the stones are all old oh, an old the cemetery that's the teeth I see I see how'd you not get that I thought you were going something with animals and dirty there's dirt there uh huh. But they really clean up, they scrub up yeah. the stones. I see. So it's clean stones, but they're all... Ah, <laughs> uh, got it, got it, got it, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, I think it's better to have ugly and healthy. Yes. Like children. Yeah, some people have, uh, you know, well, a lot of people have... You don't want a hot retard. Healthy and nice, though. I guess that's nice. That's ideal. Yeah. Yeah, you want a good-looking car that runs well. you uh-huh. got a great... Running car, uh-huh. but it's uh, a cyber truck. Yeah, it's not great. It's a Pinto or whatever. There whatever you looks go. bad. Pinto was always the go to shitty car in my neighborhood. Yeah, a lot of jokes in movies, and they blew up easy. They had to be recalled because you dink, you tap it, it would go into flames. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Like the, um, they would implode like the submarine. I don't even know what a Pinto looks like. I just know Pinto was the punchline. It's a 70s hoopty, you know, brown. Real 70s looking shitbox. A brown hoopty. There you go. You know what I've been noticing? I've been watching all these old westerns. There's always a Ben. Every western has a character named Ben. Which is weird. Ben's very Jewy, I find. I think it's Jewy, but it's also. Franklin. Yeah, also western. There's a lot of non Jew Bens. Ben. I've really got Billy the Kid. You got Wyatt Earp. You got the uh, the other guy. Well, I'm not saying main characters. I'm saying side characters. Ah, the the side has been. Character. Has ah. been? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we should probably start this whole thing over. Been there, done that. But I got, wait, I got a dentist there. What was I going to yes, say about yes. the dentist? The drill, the chair, the floss, the sucky thing. Oh, I had this. So I go to the dentist, and I really play up my cowardice. Because mm. it gets you get nice treatment over there. That's true. I walk in, first of all, huge titted receptionist. Oh, lady. boy. Yeah, and and big fake lip like a like a Puerto Rican with all the work. Ooh-wee. Nice. Nothing big, wrong with that. Big fat lips and yes. fat tits. And Nails. A big old bottom. Oh, how'd she got up? Huh? Oh yeah, she strolls around. Oh, she puts the files in with the scrubs on. She makes sure you're looking. Absolutely. It's really not. Maybe I should be careful with this because well, if they ever find out who I am. You're gonna need the sucky thing in the lobby because you're drooling all over this Puerto Rican. I had a sucky thing in the lobby. My act. I don't know. I don't, that didn't make any sense. Hey. We're a little rusty, folks. Rusty. <laughs> but I go in there, and I i mean, I play it up. I'm fake puking in the plants, and they go, oh, here he is. He's the cut-up. There's the receptionist and the other lady. 
And I go, I'm so scared. And I, I, I keep doing the fake run, uh, you know, that stuff. Oh, and sure. I'm like, I'm like, go easy on me. Oh, my God. Give me the gas. Can you put me out for this? And she's like, it's just a cleaning. You're crazy. Oh, uh, that's fun. But they, they need that because they got a pretty drab day. You come in, you shake it up. They're having a nice time. And so I go in there. And then the hygienist, I go, I'm a pussy. Really go easy on me. Treat me like I'm a five-year-old. The whole thing. And uh, so then I, I do a great job. She says, you got the best teeth ever, besides how gross they are. Mm. The gums are nice. Everything's good. Nice asshole. Yes. Then she goes, all right, the doctor. So I feel like relief. I got through it. Then she's like, the doctor's going to come in. I'm like, well, what the fuck's the doctor all about? Yeah. So, wait, wait, wait. It's a dentist's office. What, what do they have a doctor for? Well, the dentist is a doctor. What? <laughs> is that like Cosby, where they just call you a doctor? No, it's a doctor. But wait a minute. A dentist is a doctor. Doctors don't clean. No, the hygienist cleans. Oh, the hygienist. But a dentist does clean. Last time I went to this place, the dentist did do the cleaning. Because I think you have to, it's like, you have to be a paramedic to be a fireman in oh, some places. You got to be a see. hygienist to be a dentist. You got to crawl before you walk. Got it, got it. Oh, man, I didn't know they were doctors. I've been so rude to them. Yeah, and plus a doctor, they need to know how to clean because they know the, you know, like like a doctor knows how to take care of yourself. Like a doctor's I like, guess. hey, eat a salad, you fag. I think they read the book. <laughs> you know my doctor pretty well. But I think they read the book. I don't know if they, uh, they're not cleaning. They don't have a, a vacuum and a, and a duster. No, they know how to clean. What? Yeah, they know all the tools. The dentist has to know all the tools. But as a contractor, a house guy, a builder, you know, he's building a house. Uh, he doesn't know how to clean a house. No, that's different. Okay. Well, it's a different occupation, but it's, it's a, I think it's an apt comparison. I suppose so, but I think he would know how to clean the house. The carpenter. Yes, He's carpenter. like, yeah, you vacuum, you sweep. My uncle's a carpenter. He's the cleanest guy I ever met. Oh, okay. Well, maybe Jesus was clean. Ah, I can't imagine. It was like the 1300s. He was wow. all dirty. <laughs> and he had a lot of whores and wine around, so who knows? And he had nine guys with him. What is it, 12 disciples? I can't oh, disciple. Yeah. Yeah, 12 disciples. I know so little. My biblical knowledge is really appalling. I'll let you borrow my Koran. Apollo, isn't that a biblical? That's Greek. Uh, is that the Bible? No, no, that's mythology. <laughs> Apollo is the Roman god of music. What percentage of the fans do you think will write to me and be like, he was born before 1380, you fucking retard? Yeah, well, it is BC. Right. Before Apollo. Right, that's what made it such a funny before situation. Before yeah. All right. So. But any part, so the doctor's got to come in. But I don't like the doctor because the doctor's the one that's shifty. Ah, uh, yeah. He's got he's got bad news. You keep saying he. This is heteronormative. It's oh. a she. Well, I don't see gender. Um. Anyways, the doctor comes in. So now I'm back to shit in my pants. And she does the thing. She goes, ah, and it's a different doctor than last time. So mm. she goes, oh, I know you. And I go, I don't think we've met. She goes, yeah, yeah. You need a a root canal. Oh, wow. And then I just went full fucking, uh, you know, like like a manager and an umpire. I was like, I don't need a root canal, you piece of shit. You got the wrong guy. I started kicking dirt on her, and, and I spit in her face, and I called her a cunt. Yes. And she goes, well, well maybe you're a different guy. Let me look at the chart. And I was like, I, I promise you, I don't need a root canal. I'm not getting a root canal. I had many root canals. I've Good. been duped. Give her the boot canal. Not bad. All right, it's something. <laughs> so, uh, Canal Street, Little Italy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Boot. Ah. Italy. Ah. Connection. Yeah. I'm off. Anyways, so uh, she looks at the old chart. And she goes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, root canal. Like, she thinks she's like, no, I'm right. Yeah. I do know who you are. And I'm like, why would you be right about me? Right. And she looks and she goes, yeah, yeah, it says right here, four root canals. And I'm like, no, no, I've had four root canals. And she's like, oh, you're right. And I'm oh, like, what are we doing here? What happens if you didn't argue? I know my chart. Yeah, well, you know your roots. Also, tell her to listen to the pod. We got it all documented. Uh, yes. So uh, That's a different chart. Exactly. I charted. Yeah. So uh, that's funny. That's a musical term. I huh? charted. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I, I hit like the billboard. Yeah, yeah I charted. Charted. That's funny. All right. That is funny. Not like laugh funny, but still. But anyway, she goes, uh, yeah, yeah. So you had a bunch of work. And then she looked at the root canal. And I got to say, you know, all that dentist work was a nightmare. But she's like, I'll tell you, these are good root canals. She looked oh. at the extract. She's like, these are really good. Good posts. Good blah, blah, blah. Whatever the fuck. Mm, a lot of likes. Views. Yeah. So then uh, I finished up. And she said, you're good. Keep doing what you're doing. You're the best in the biz. New appointment in December. And then you leave. You just feel like you just took heroin. All these heroin addicts just go to the dentist yes. and leave. Feeling good. Good point. Good point. Although they're probably not flossing as much. So they yeah. probably wouldn't have as good of a uh, chart. 
That's a good point. Don't put the chart before the horse. Even though I feel like he went generous on you out here. We he gave me it. some real white and pearlies. I'm I'm like I got a perfect row, but he he didn't go too hard on you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Could be because a few of these cartoon people have really done oh, a number on me. Talk about the posters. Don't get me started. Yeah, all well, the posters. Well, you know. Pick one of those up. You want to put that puppy in the uh, the apartment and, and invite us over and hurt our feelings. Well, I feel like you got fucked on the poster. Usually it's me. Usually I have like two this. fangs and uh, my neck. I'm okay with it. Let, Let me see. Looking, it. Pull, pull that poster. Who did the poster, back. Chuck? Pete? Is, uh, it's it's like J it's like Art J Angel on Instagram. Art J Angel. Okay, hey, okay those are the shorts somewhere. Look at that. Whoa, the thighs. That's uh, something. Yeah, look at that. Your Pretty face good. looks a little ghoulish, a little downsy. I got a bit of a troll uh, under the bridge troll going. Well, you look like you just came from the dentist. You yeah, got like a little. Ooh. I got bad news. I get I get a root canal on the chart. And your full monkey. Well, I'm. Uh, like... Yeah. Well, uh, he wanted like a to get the, uh, the comedy and the fart. Oh, I see. So it's see, a twofer. I see. Hey, look at this. A little Chuck cameo in the back there. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's not horrible. This, as far as, no, I like it. As far as I go, that's as good as it gets. But that's lunch. You got a little, little uh, funky. I got a little monkey going on. I got a little primate action. Yeah, not bad. Well, get one of these three weeks ago. Yes. When uh, we sold them. <laughs> Happy 4th. Primate. You're my uh, good day, mate. Oh, yeah. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Happy yeah. Independence Day. Ooh. One of my favorite holidays. Probably number two. Oh. Number three. Suck it, Native Americans. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, what's number one? Christmas? Christmas. I actually think the people that don't say Christmas are just full of shit. Mm. But Thanksgiving well, is Jews. way up there for me. Thanksgiving's big. I like the football. A lot of family, though. Family sucks. See, I, as a kid, mine was Mardi Gras, but I know I'm biased. But it was a week or two weeks of just debauchery. Right. So, uh, and you got off school, so of course I would go Mardi Gras as a kid. But that wasn't that was regional. I think you got to go national because if we're going regional, ultimately Patriots Day is uh, my favorite holiday. I, mean, I, go right. to the so I have like the most tradition, and we fly in, and yes. uh, we go to the Sox game and the marathon, and it feels special. I feel part of something. But I mean, I mean, who are we kidding here? That's like, hey, uh, my favorite. Uh, Comedian is Mark Twain. Remember that? No, oh, we don't have to get into that. That was quite a fist fight. But yeah, and I'm sure you know Chuck's favorite is Pride Day Parade. So everybody's got their own thing. But I, uh, I, I, I gotta say Christmas is up there because you get the whole queef. You know, you get the holidays, you get the songs, you get the food, the presents, the vibe. There's a vibe. There's the the month and it it, it makes you like emotional. Yes. The music is so great. The colors are great. Yeah, I know. I love the red and green. And then we live in New York City, which is like the capital of Christmas. Oh, tell me about the the Santa with the bell, and he's all dirty and gay, and it... all that shit. The big tree, Nightmare Before Christmas, Home Alone, uh, okay, Die Hard. It's very American. Yes, St. Patrick's Cathedral, Rockefeller, all that shit. Times Square, all yeah. the bullshit. By the way, I went to the movies last night. Saw this movie, Past Lives, about mm. these Korean folks. It's it's nice. Koreans are good. Yeah, They're very creative. Oh people. my god, uh, fantastic films. But southern, southern. It's fascinating to when you're at the movie theater. It feels special. You're at the theater and you're watching a scene. It takes place in New York and uh, Seoul. And you watch the movie, and you're like, oh, that's 10 minutes from where we are right now. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that, I love that. That's Gro one of the perks of living in New York. Growing up, I never watched a movie where I was like, hey, that's over down the street. Yeah, exactly. No Whitman movies. No, no Whitman. Well, the, the, the worst thing is, I, I think I'd almost rather no movies than whenever they'd come to New Orleans, it was some fucking ship tugboat douche going, I guarantee you, oh, oh, and he's smoking a shrimp. I'm like, what is this? I don't look like that. I was just watching Thunder Bay with Jimmy Stewart. There you go. They come down there and build a thing, and everyone's like, get out of here, you city boy. Yeah, they got a hay thing coming out of their mouth, a straw hat, overalls, They're like, yeah, we're going to catch us a gator. Well, hey, we're not getting it so easy either. Every one of our films is like, get these goddamn fucking blacks out of here. That's Blah. true. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not, you know, we look like assholes too. Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of chowder heads. Yeah. How much you benching, kid? How do you like them apples? Yes, exactly. Never met that guy in my life. Maybe one guy. Who, Tom Dustin? Yeah, Tom. He never asked me to bench anything. No, he's not a big bench guy. No, no. Well, never lifted anything. Uh, I guess not. I lifted a, 
uh, a vodka bottle. A couple of <laughs> Bud Lights here yeah. and there. By the way, the film is really oh. locking in, baby. There we go. Can't wait. Key West documentary, we calling it? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, okay, there you yeah. go. We didn't write dialogue. <laughs> I tried that once. It didn't go so hot. Uh, it's got almost 10% on Rotten. Yeah, no, no. It's double digits for sure. There but you go. Uh, this is a documentary about Tom Dustin and Key West, and this is going to really knock people's socks oh, off. Great. I'm standing by this film. It's a hell of a picture. And uh, I think it's going to be a cult classic. We're going to try to Ooh. debut it, premiere it at Skank Fest if we can get it done in time. I think we'll you see. can get there. And, and Tom's a fucking talent. And uh, I saw a sizzle of it, and it looks great. So I'm, I'm pumped to see the whole kit and caboo. It's really sizzling. So, well, let, let's get into it. I yeah. mean, last week we did Australia. That was wild. You want to add some let, Australia? Let me wrap it all up, put a big kangaroo bow on this bitch, because uh, I didn't talk about New Zeal. No, I'm dying here. Oh, we teased New Zealand. We teased New Zealand. I mean, nothing nothing too crazy to write home about, but a couple things. So you do all of Australia. We did Perth all the way to Melbourne to Brisbane. We did the whole fucking island. There's about 11 people on the whole thing. And I we go, we're going to end in New Zealand, three-day trip, one show, two days off. Not too shabby. Because mm-hmm. they, they, at the end of the tour, they try to like wind you down a little bit, give you some free time, because you got to go right back to civilization. Right. The, the wonky flight, the, the time change, the whole thing. So we fly down to New Zealand, three and a half hours, <whistles> island to island. Mm-hmm. We're going one big island to one small island. Now, the thing with New Zealand is they didn't kill all their natives. Hmm. Australia wiped them out. There's about 11 left, and uh, they're terrified, and they're living in a cave. What are we talking, like Native Americans? or Can you still say the, Aborigine, or is we, that bad? They said we can say it. We can say Aborigine? Yeah, we're not there. Oh, shit, nice. None of it makes sense. It's like colored person is bad, but person of color is okay. It's oh. all just rules. Okay. It's all pipes. So we go down to New Zealand, and they're embracing the, they call them the Maori. That's hmm. their, their, their natives. And they got a thing called the haka, where they go, ah, it's like a dance to intimidate the enemy. Oh, jeez. And geez. they've embraced it. They got the spears, the canoes, the headdress, the makeup. They're Sounds a like fun Sixth people. Avenue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're fun people. Uh, we haven't embraced that, though. We're trying to get rid of them. But, uh, yeah, you get down there, and they go, hey, I'm on the flight. And the tour manager goes, this show called The Project would like to have you be a guest on New Zealand TV. Fun. And you're still a kid. I'm like, TV? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do TV. Okay. This but, is like Lost in Translation. Remember that? Oh, yeah. And Bill Murray does the wacky show. Very similar, but this is like The View. Oh. Yeah. It's not a good place for you. Not good. Bad view. So I go, uh, yeah, I'll do it. Fuck it. And I go, do they know me? They're like, oh, yeah, they're fans. They're fans. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I, I go, let me look it up on YouTube. Uh-huh. Now, I don't want to get too in the weeds here, but uh, I look it up on YouTube. The first clip, the biggest clip, is a guy being like, if you don't respect trans people, I'm going to come out there and kill you. And I went on a tirade and, and, and interviewed people on the street, and they didn't like it. I threw buckets of paint on them, and they were all, all the people at the desk were like, woo! And I was like, oh, they're going to hate me. Oh, my Not that God. I have any beef with trans people, but just that's not my cup of jizz. I'm not trying to throw paint on people. I'm trying to throw, throw jizz on myself. You know, I'm the opposite. <laughs> All I want is just thrown on me, and all that's a crime. I, the paint. Throwing paint on people, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been to New Zealand, but here in America, that's a no-no too, Daffy. Well, I think if you're wearing a fur coat, it's allowed, apparently. I don't think so. Okay, well. I think that's assault. But yeah, hey, I'm not, hey, what am I, a lawyer over here? Yeah. I'm not named Ben. I'm not uh, in sure. the lawyer area. <laughs> There's a lot of. Well, I'm telling you, look up westerns with a guy named Ben. I'm telling you, there's many, it. many Bens. Well, you know, paint, paint by numbers. Either way, I go on the project, and you can feel it right away. This is everybody's got a mask on. It's all COVIDy still, and I'm like, oh, hey, I'm in the, I'm in the bowels, and I came right from the flight. So you're kind of like, oh, and then I go out there, and they're going so. I'm on TV, bunch of cameras, bunch of audience, and I'm, and they're like, so. uh... What do you think about family members not talking anymore? You know, it's all phones and this and that. We need to bring back the family talking. And I was like, well, my dad would hit my mom at the dinner table, so it's not always good. And they were like, all right, well, we're going to we're gonna cut to commercial. And then, the, you know, the guy in the camera is, like, doing this, you know. Oh, and you can see the whole, like, the booth back there with the glass. And they're like, 
And then we come back, and they go, so uh, what's up with you saying Kevin Hart? I'm like, well, you know, I'm in whiteface, and I've always wanted to be black, especially downtown. And they're like, all right, well, we got to go to Casper, everybody. Casper, you know. So it was horrible. I bombed. I, at one point, I go, I heard you got a lot of notes in your back pocket. I go, well, these are just swastikas. And they go, you're out of here. Wow. So I got three no lines paint? in. Did they throw paint at you? No paint. No, no. They, uh, was the paint guy there? I uh, know he was a guest at some other oh, time. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I was worried the host. I thought it was like you can't do that on television. When no, they dump the bucket on you. But it's just so weird because they're all backstage going, "Hey, well, I saw this. We like that. That was great. I'm a fan." And then you go out there and you do you, and they hate it. Right. It's a fascinating thing. It's it'd be like saying, "Hey, my MJ. I'm not not MJ. I'm not Michael Jordan. But you know, hey, hey, basketball player, come out here and show us what you got." And he starts dunking, and they're like, "Whoa." What are you doing? Right. I yeah. guess it's a little different because dunking isn't a, a swastika. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. I see what you're saying. But I think that's the why. That's that's the why. <laughs> that's the the why the TV is uh, going the way of the dodo. <laughs> YMCA. Not a great sentence, but I think TV is down yeah. the tubes. And you'd think you'd the want you'd, yeah the boob tube. You'd want the guy to go kooky because you might get a little viewership. Right. You know, you might get a little buzz, like, oh, this guy went swastika on us. What a weirdo. Check it out. Yeah, I think they do want that. But then there, the, what happens is it goes viral on the intranet, so you get the juice, uh, but not them. Because the people that are watching don't want that. Right. The people that watch and go, look, at this guy's crazy. They're not going to watch the next episode of that show. Yeah. That show stinks. But have we gone so far that we can't tell I'm joking? When I say these are swastikas? Of course we have, yeah. Okay. What else would that's all we ever talk about? I need someone to say that out loud yeah, because yeah. no one will say that. Yeah, no, there's yeah, there's no, no, clearly. Yeah. My dad didn't hit my mom at the dinner table. You no. know, I'm, I'm trying to say outrageous shit for entertainment value. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just, no. that's all I want. I just need someone to say that. Yeah. No, it's been happening for quite a while. But that's also been going on since the 50s. Sure. You know, George Garland comes out, oh, Chuck's, Chuck's falling off the wagon right uh, now. I'm good, thank I'll you. I'll take a water with some ice. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Uh, um, okay, but even in the 50s, I felt like there was a sliver of society going, that is wrong, you shouldn't talk like that, that's inappropriate. But the rest of us are going, ah, how fun is this? Look at this course. guy. Yeah, we're the fun people. Yeah, well, but but now there's it almost feels like it's we're, we're the minority. The fun people used to be the majority. Don't no, you think? Don't no. you think there was more the fun people? people the minority, of course. That's always been the minority. What? The, the fun, fun people. people. Yeah, okay. like Woodstock. The majority of people were not at Woodstock. Yeah. The but majority of people going, hey, what's with these assholes? And they, they should get a job and dress like me. Cut their hair. Yeah. Okay. I think. Well, what? I don't know. I just. If the majority was like us, we wouldn't have careers. I guess you're right. These people don't know how to say, I eat my own dad's cum. That's tough to to learn. You had to go to school for that. But all right, yeah, okay. It just. But how about this? My point being, it feels like people who used to be the fun people are now not. You right. Usually, you don't see them flop back to unfun. Right. And that seems like it's happening more and more. I mean, I'm on my way to being unfun. I used to jump on windshields and take dumps on hoods, and now yeah. I'm like, hey, everybody, stick to the right side of the sidewalk. What sure. kind of what kind of life are we leading here? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's more uh, respectable vandalism fun. Right. But I'm talking about jokes. Yeah. Well, but you know, you're not so. You know that when you go on there and say these are swastikas, you're purposefully ruffling feathers. You're aware they're not going to like that. Well, I'm aware that the producer guy in the booth is going, "Hey, you fucking kook!" But I figure the host would be like, "That was good." No, but the host's job is on the line. You have to know that. If the, no. jokes, if the host goes, "Ha ha ha." It's going to be on the front page of the paper. Host likes swastikas. But can't I be the fall guy? You know, you go, that was horrible. But later go, that was awesome. But it's all pipes, pipes Jerry. Jerry. It's, all, it's all association. Yeah. I just had a guy the other day go, hey, would you ever do Nick DiPaolo's podcast? Because he's mm, crazy. Right. And I'm like, yeah, see, people are scared. Yeah. People are afraid to even appear with somebody else. Because nowadays and for years, if you associate with the guy... That's bad. Yeah. This is like we saw, I've talked about like our politics, like not to talk politics, but in the old days, to work across the aisle was like a big deal. That was a virtue. 
This mm. Democrat works with Republicans. Oh, oh, I like that. Now it's the complete reverse. Complete. You're like, this now you're a traitor. This fucking Democrat got caught talking to a Republican. Right. Whoa, get him out of here. But that's not very inclusive. It's not inclusive at all. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, it just seems like there's a lot of contradiction and uh, hypocrisy going on. Of course. Okay. Boy, my balls are really smushed in here. Folks, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes we're faced with really tough choices, and the way forward can be hard to find. Amen, brother and sister and mother. Yeah. And that's who causes me to go to therapy. That grouping. BetterHelp's online therapy helps you stay in tune with your values and with what you want out of life so you can take the next right step. To get matched with a therapist, just fill out their online questionnaire. Thera the therapy is totally online, so you can meet wherever and whenever it's convenient for you. Folks, you know me. I love therapy. I, I talk about it all the time here. We talk about Alan. He saved our lives. I went to therapy when I was seven years old. I went to therapy when I was 20 years old. I went to therapy when I was 30 years old. And uh, now I just go. I'm, I'm a lifer, baby, because uh, it really helps keep me on an even keel, along with many other things. What's more important than your mental health? Literally nothing. Go. It's easy. It's made easy by BetterHelp. It used to be a nightmare. It can still be a nightmare unless you use BetterHelp. Yeah. Get excited about the future. Talking with a licensed therapist can give you clarity about the past and hope for what's to come. Let therapy be your map. With BetterHelp, visit betterhelp.com slash Tuesdays today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Dot com slash Tuesdays. Betterhelp.com slash Tuesdays. Go do it. Do it right now. Yeah. Hey, hey folks. Tuesday's story is brought to you by First Leaf. Summertime is the season to throw parties, and when you're throwing a party, you need an amazing bottle of wine. Spill the wine. Take that, girl. Lucky for you, First Leaf has you covered. First Leaf is America's most personalized wine company. It takes the stress and worry out of picking the perfect bottle of wine. Get started. Getting started is easy. Take a quiz about your preferences, and their expert team will pick a selection of wines just for you. I love a good vino. My wife is like a connoisseur, sommelier, alcoholic, whatever you want to call it. So... Always tough to choose, just the right blend, the right flavor, and, you know, you go off the bottle. How the hell are you going to do what? Some cover of a bottle? What the hell does that tell you? So this is good. This is genius. Your own personal sommelier. And uh, you take a quiz. It's easy peasy. You send it in, and they send you results. It's pretty perfect. It's a genius idea, and you can learn more about wine on the way. Give a bottle away as a quick gift for any occasion, or pop one open at home to celebrate the easiest wine purchasing experience you've ever had. To make sure you've got great wine when you want it this summer, you got to try First Leaf. Head over now, tryfirstleaf.com slash Tuesdays to sign up, and you'll get your first six hand-curated bottles for just $44.95. Wow, that's a steal. Try firstleaf.com slash Tuesdays. That's T R Y F I R S T L E A F dot com slash Tuesdays. Get your first six bottles for under eight dollars a bottle. Try firstleaf.com slash Tuesdays. All right, so I got to bring this up. This is fun. But for the record, I think it's funny. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's very funny. Well, we have a whole show based around these wacky, inappropriate. Things. Certainly. That's when we really get in trouble. When I'm like, swastik is Mark. That's really not. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, every once in a while I do do that, and people think I'm serious. I know. They I write, know. like, you're trying to censor Mark. I'm like, what? So they're dumb the other way. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, it's two cults. The horseshoe, whatever you want to talk about it. The we horseshoe. Got, we got two massive culty people. Yeah. I'm a whore lifter shoe at my house. But let me just say this. So we the haka. I mentioned the haka. So haka. The, the haka is the ah, oh, oh, the, the oh, native oh. dance. I see. Or the Aboriginal, the Maori, whatever you want to call it. Not so I go. We got to see the haka. You know, it's hacky, it's hockey, but we got to go haka, haka, haka. Ice hockey. Yeah, <laughs> it's a haka shit. But we go to the museum, which is real white guy shit. Like, let's go to the museum and see the haka because you're supposed to go see it out in the wild. Oh, I but see. who's got that kind of time, and I don't want to get a spear through the dick. I'm confused by the haka. So this is a real-life people, or it's like a show? You buy a ticket, or you just actually go to see the hakas? 
you you buy a ticket at the museum, but I think you can see it like when they when they compete like in a weird sport. These are people. These are people out there living. They're it's most not of them a are th- sport. Well, they have sports. Ah, much like us. <laughs> so confused. Okay, well they're they're a tribe. They're a group like I Jews. Gotcha. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, we go. Let's go because you know hockey. You got to find. You got to go. Oh, they're having a game. We should go. But we, you know, we're only here for a certain a lot of amount of time. So I go. Let's just go to the museum, see the hockey. You can buy a ticket. There's a whole Maori exhibit. You can, you can see the tools and the the crafts and the carts and the whole thing. So we go down there, and they go, the haka's at three. Great. We get a ticket to the haka. Before we go in, I'm looking at all the artifacts. Oh, there's an arrowhead and a dildo. And the guy comes up, and he, he's wearing the full garb. And he goes, whoop, boop, boop, with a big horn. And he's got no shirt on, a loincloth, tits, uh, a feather, you know, face paint. Beads, jewels, n- shells, and he goes. The haka will commence in six minutes. Be in the auditorium. Mark Norman. And I go. Oh, hey. And he goes. I'm a fan. What the hell? Can we get a photo? I'm taking a photo with the haka guy. What? Now. I mean, oh. this is a big six eight brown dude with shells and a loincloth and sandals. Oh my! We got we got to plug this in. Can we put this in the photo? Yeah, it's on my Instagram. You put can find the photo, it. the haka photo. I, put, I made it my number one photo. You know, you do the ten, the ten pics, the uh, carousel they call it. It's yes. My number one. Haka con. Yeah. So uh, I I go. Hey, let's do a photo. And he goes. I'm I'm on in six. I go. I heard. I'm here to see. I bought a ticket. And uh, I go, you doing merch after? Is there a meet and greet? Whatever. So um, I, we go in the auditorium. It's uh, six people in the auditorium. Wow. huge auditorium, six people. No kidding. It's yeah. like a Columbus Funny Bone. <laughs> yeah. Late show. yeah, we've had a few of those. Uh, so um, they papered, too, and that was the other five. But I go in, and the lady comes out. She goes, Welcome. This is the Hakka and the Maori traditions. Basket weaving. And they all imitate it. And the guy keeps looking up at me. Ah, shit. <laughs> this is brutal. And I go, oh, there's the guy. That's the guy. And then they go, and now for the tribal dance. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? And he's looking up at me. And he's like, hey, uh. And he's so embarrassed. Oh, this poor guy. I know. I felt so bad for him. He's got it's such a serious, you know, tradition. And there's all this culture and, and time behind it. And he's like, Hut to hood to hut, jeez. Hut to hood. Ah, fuck. And it was uh. so brutal. And then at the end, they do the big haka, which is like the aggressive, scare the enemies dance. And I mean, it's like spears and ay, 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 crazy faces, tongue out. Ah, you know, it's all tribal and scary. And I could, he keeps looking at me. Because he's like, oh, there's the guy oh, this who I'm is a fan brutal. of. It was so uncomfortable. I felt bad for him. I almost left. Because he was like, What's he was. Do if he hears this. Well, I mean, I like the guy. This is all positive. I totally get it. I'm Good not. Guy. So, he wasn't bad. He was just. Uh, he was just uncomfortable. And then at the end, I see him go. Uh, oh, jeez. He's not off stage yet. He's going. Oh boy. Oh boy. And he's uh, he's kind of laughing, and we're all like, "Oh shit!" He's kind of laughing. It was crazy, but it was such an awkward moment. It felt like uh, I went to a school play of a kid I fucked before or something. <laughs> it was brutal. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, I, I, I can I can connect the feeling, and I, I'm sure I told this story in the podcast before when I opened for Greg Morton. Greg you Morton. Know Greg Morton. Morton? Legendary uh, comic. You know him. Morton Williams. Oh, Greg, Greg Morton. Morton. Yeah. Yeah. Black guy does impressions at the end of his set. Sure. You know him. Oh, yeah. Right? I don't know him. You don't know Greg Morton? I've never heard the name in my life. He's got a space between his teeth. He's a killer. He's like a funny bone regular. He's been okay. around forever since like the 80s, I think. I don't know Greg Morton. I think I'm gonna get his name right. Chuck, will you type in Greg Morton, comedian, make sure I'm getting Greg this right? Greg Morton. Greg Morton. But maybe you never bumped into him. Maybe I never did. Greg Morton. Or Jim Norton. Comic. Morton Williams. Light skinned black guy, space between his teeth, funny guy. Hmm. Shit. I hope it's Greg Morton. Was he a football player too? Uh oh, this isn't looking good. He's is a, he a big black guy, light skinned black guy with a space between his teeth. Oh. Yeah, maybe he played football too. M O R T O N? Yeah. Yeah, then he is. Oh, yeah, this right. guy's very he talented. Professional football's defensive lineman for the Buffalo Bills in 1977. What, what the fuck? It says. It's, that, it's, that too old. Might be too old. Played pro football in 77. There's no way. This is going to be a different guy. He would mention that in his act. Let's say comedian. He, is he big? Uh, I don't know. All right, we'll get to the bottom of this later. But anyways, he's a comedian. I think that's his name. I hope I'm getting this right. I don't know. 
Maybe go to YouTube. Greg Morton, comedian, YouTube. I, I see him. He's on America's Got Talent. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. If it's not him, then he has a guy that looks exactly like him named Greg Morton who played football. <laughs> okay, well, anyways. They don't anyways, all look alike. I've, I've told this story before, I think, but I, I was I was featuring at this point in my career. Sure. I think we're going to have had Tuesdays at the time. This was, what, about a year ago? And, uh, hey, oh! I've been headlining for a little bit, but um, I, I was featuring for a while. But then I was driving up to Boston. And they said, hey, we need an MC at the Funny Bone over here in Hartford. Mm. And I said, you know what? I'll pick up an extra 100 bucks on the way up. Yeah. And it's me. And I forget the feature. He was very funny. And, and Greg Morton, who's like nicest guy and just a murderer. Great guy. Sweet guy. Funny comic. And But he ends his set. He does Tina Turner. He does mm. Mick Jagger. He does James Brown. And his last bit of his act is James Brown. And he has the MC put the cape on him. Oh. And then he throws it off and keeps doing Love James it. Brown. And Love I got to I gotta be like, oh, and I'm, I'm trying to do I'm, I'm part of the act. Yes. But this was when You Know What Dude was going. And I think Tuesdays were stories. And these two guys in the front row had like, You Know What Dude and Tuesdays. Shirts and they were uh -huh. excited to see me, but I had to MC first of all, uh -huh. which is embarrassing. And then I had to keep getting Greg Morton's cape, cape for him, yes, and be like, ah, "It was James Brown, everybody." And uh -huh. he moves you aside, and they, I can see these two guys like, uh. oh, okay, but I was fair. the haka. Oh, I see. You see what I'm I saying? I see where you're coming from. Yes, I felt like the haka guy. Oh man, yeah, that's tough. That's him, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. He's 61. He is older. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. All he right. is older. It says uh, America's Got Talent semifinalist, and he's a comic. But the thing is, Google has it listed wrong. It says comedian slash football player. Uh, there are two Greg Morton. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. right. 61 is too young to have played in 77. In 77. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's correct. But that's should be 71. But a Tina Turner impression, I think, shows your age a, a little. I suppose so, but I mean, it brings the house down. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking standing O, forget about it. That's great. All but right. anyway, so I, I relate to the Hakka, and I feel for the Hakka. And, yes, uh, it was brutal after after you know you all file out to the middle of the museum, the common area, and he's like, "Hey, you want to get a pic?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he's, hey. it was it was brutal. It was brutal. It reminds me, I know a comedian who's a very funny comedian who's been around forever. But he was, uh, you know, you still need to make some extra cash during the day. And he was waiting tables yeah. in L.A. And he had to serve Mike Birbiglia and Barry Katz oh. for, like, eating dinner. And he was oh, like, I, I wanted to just take a kitchen knife and stab myself in the throat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to bark. And it was like, come on in. Hey, comedy show. Get out of the cold. We got free tickets. Hey, what do you want? And then, then you have to go on and go. I'm the guy. Yeah, it's a it's a shitty feeling. But I gave this guy free tickets to the show, and uh, he came to the to the big theater the next night. So all all, right. all, all good that ends uh, Haka. But let me just say this: the last show of the tour. You know, you you do 15 or 16 shows, some good, some bad. This was the hottest crowd, the best show in New Zealand. It, they have a wildness to them, they, these people out there. You know, they live on farms, they fuck goats, they do drugs. They're not in, inundated with all the Trump and the news and the fucking bullshit, the school shootings, and they just live. Right. And so the crowd was hot, and I did the thing where I did a bunch of bar shows all over New Zealand because you have a couple nights off, and you meet all the locals. Mm. And, you, you know, you can always tell that one guy that nerd he's like a comedy dweeb and he's like working on new he's obsessed he's big fans of like comics he loves greg morton you know he's heard of everybody and i go this guy and i go how about a guest set and he's like yeah sure and then uh he does the guest set at the big theater kills wow he's having a blast he knows what it means it's not just some guy like oh i'll do that he's like this means the world to me then he reveals Huge gay, wow! Big twos gay. Got all the albums, all the action figures, all the posters. He's a he's a he's a mensch. I wish I could remember his name. That doesn't but matter. Who great cares? guy, great kid. He, he knows who he is. He stinks. And uh, we just had Keegan. That Keegan. was his name. Keegan. Keegan Tyndall. Yes, yes. Um, Brian Keegan. But uh, great, great egg, and we had a blast. This guy, Rudy, did the show. He's a real Maori with the face tattoo and the earrings and everything. So uh, it was a hell of a hoot and a holler. And the Q&A was so funny that they were, they were, I was dying. They were throwing drugs on the stage. I got a bunch of weed, a bunch of mushrooms. I put the video on my YouTube, and uh, 
Just so good to end on a bang. And Love then it. flew out the next day. That's a nice feeling. And I, you must feel so nice to be back on home soil. It does feel good. You know, New York, it's great to leave. And I, I loved the hell out of the trip. And I, I felt free and, and away. And then you come back and you're like, good to be home. Of course. Yeah. Although I can't wait to get out of here. Good to be homo. Yeah. But you, but you will be coming in to do the pod and do shows, and that'll be fun. It'll be a treat. Well, you know what I decided? I realized I have the office at my apartment. I can just keep the office when I move to Jersey. Yeah, there you go. And then I can go. I have a flight from LaGuardia. And by the way, yeah, this isn't really worth saying on the podcast. Eh, you never know what the queefs love. There's now flights from LaGuardia to LAX. Oh. You used to only be able to get to Denver. Now you can go all the way. Yeah, what the hell? It's a, one of the most major airports in America. We can't go to L.A.? Well, LaGuardia is small. I think the, air, the uh, runway was too small to oh. get a big old jet. How do you like that? I think those big jets take more fuel. You need a big 789 or whatever the fuck it is, and you yeah. need a long stretch. But now I think Easy. they have like super jets. You can just, they All just right. take off like a helicopter. Love a super jet. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, let's go to L.A. because uh, those L.A. flights are a come guzzler and a half. Are I'll we- be in L.A. July next weekend. I'm in Irvine, which somebody, an L.A. friend said Irvine is basically L.A. It's like. Yeah. Doing a show in uh, Queens or something. I guess it's about an hour drive, though. Yeah. So. But it's an hour from the Upper West to... Uh, true that. Brooklyn or whatever the That's fuck. true. Well, yeah, come on out. Irvine, that's a hot room and a great club, and they're going to treat you right, fatty. So you'll, you'll have a good time. Yeah, I can't wait. Come out to that. Uh, Irvine next week, San Jose the week after that. A big California a couple months. I'm in SF uh, September 7th and 8th, so well, make sure you come out to those. You're going to love Irvine, too, because there's a moment in L.A. You know, L.A.'s Skid Row... Hobo, Kook Central. When you're driving Irvine, it's like Toontown. At one point, you pass that Irvine border, and the roads are flatter. They're smooth. Mm-hmm. The, the, the sun comes out, and it's like, happy day, I'm here to stay, or whatever. And there's no kooks. I love no kooks. But I, I, I open for Sal in Irvine. It is. It's like, a, it's like a movie town. It feels like Hill Valley. Yes! Hill Valley. Pleasantville out there. I can't wait. So, uh... Come on out. Buy a ticket, for God's sakes. Nobody now, comes. Now put something in my ass and twist it. What All do you right. got? Look at these legs. These look fun, aren't it's they? A solid trunk of tree you got here. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your panties there, the red. Yeah, those are some, uh, ma- what do you call Sheath. it? Sheath. Sheath. Oh, my That's God. I almost wear. said the wrong underwear. What would you say, mangina? No. These are sheath, I swear to God. They're they're labelless. I don't know why. Look at these ones. Libel. Don't you like when you ever give yourself a front wedgie and it feels pretty good? A Melvin, they call it in the business. Oh, that's right. But yeah. my God, you get that dick <laughs> smushed with the latex or whatever oh, it is. Oh, don't get me started. Sometimes I used to ride a horse just for the feeling. Have any women ever jerked off to this podcast? Call in. <laughs> Write to us. Because every once in a while, send a video. Someone will show a pair of tits or whatever. Has anybody ever watched Tuesdays? And re- they're probably not looking at my side of the screen, but still, has anyone ever flicked the old bean looking at this show? I know I have. I mean, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, please. Say, we're, the, we're the opposite of women. You know, a woman sees a guy jerking off to her at a window. And she calls the police. I see a girl jerking off to me. I go. Send me your uh, your your handle. I mean, I've never seen a woman jerking off to me, but I would like I to. Either, and I'm if saying. she did, if I did, it would be a, it would be a high five moment. My wife jerks off in front of me, but those eyes are sealed. I mean, she's closing them like well, this. Is she Asian? If she, oh, uh, I see. <laughs> did jizz on them? She can't open them. That happened to me once. I was what? a woman was driving me to the airport, and uh, I hooked up. This was back in my single days. Nutted right on the old face of Rue, and then she had to drive me to the airport. She was like, "Drive with the what? You gave her the old pirate, huh?" <laughs> She had the patch. I know, and her hook was all over that steering wheel. And um, That's one good thing about glasses. You can hit those. You can <laughs> get a little windshield wiper going. No, but you can never get it all off because my glasses are still a little foggy from the load I took. A oh, really? Ago. Yeah, my all dad. Right. <laughs> well, at least you and your dad are getting closer. <laughs> Finally. Old Stevie. Would well, you yeah. rather your dad come in your face or your mother just kind of uh, like... Choke, what do you call it? Smother you with her pussy for like 10 seconds. Smother me? What do you mean? On the face? Like uh, pussy on the face, in the mouth. Like we, it's hard to breathe for uh, five Mississippis. You get five Mississippis or you have to lay there while your dad masturbates to completion over your face and onto your face. I take the smother in a second. Big smother. She's my smother and I love her. Yeah. <laughs> Smother, smother, can you hear me, you smother fucker? I'll go smother because it's five seconds. 
I can go to a happy place. I can pretend it's another puss because I can't see her, even though I know that smell too well because I came out of it. But the dad, you got to talk to him. He's going to be like, just say some stuff, get me going. Well, Eddie's 78, so it's going to take a half oh, an hour. Oh, I would put a Viagra in that drink, <laughs> stir that up. Yeah. And I'd put a picture of uh, Putin on my face, something to get him going. <laughs> Smother! <laughs> Tell your dad <laughs> no, 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 not to come in my eyes. Way, face. Um, All right. Yeah. Well, smother. Should I trust the government? But uh, smother brothers. Ah, there now, we that'll go. be us. We'll be smothering next to each other. We yeah. can hold hands. Oh, now we're, I'll take your mom. Now, we s- can trade. Somebody animate that. Where can I be smothered by a mother's that smother ain't, mother? Don't that ain't Pixar. Uh, <laughs> it's Pixar. But uh, yeah. So you you've been uh, you've been all over God's green. Earth. I've been everywhere. I'm like Johnny Cat. I've been everywhere since last time I saw you. And some of these stories, I'm a trigger warning. You're gonna, I'm gonna get a bunch of call-ins and write-ins. There'll be a fucking, uh, you know, people dropping flyers that this story's old. Well, where are we at, CPAP? I don't know if. Uh... Forty-two. Is okay, right? perfect. Wow, this just flew right by. Uh, well, so I did Boston 17 months ago. Yes. Back, back before you left. Back, Wilbur. back, 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 back. Gone. Not the Wilbur. Oh. That was the old. We already told that one. Got it. Yeah, but your your mind is made of mush. The I sleeping get pills. Seroquel. I'm fucked. I forgot my watch today, which I'm sure you loved. Oh wow. I feel naked. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah. I went to the dentist without my wedding ring, and it felt weird because it was all women surrounded oh. by me, and I had no. I went to touch it. You know, I'm a nervous Nelly, and yeah, it wasn't I there. And yeah. uh, boy, I almost kissed uh, the hygienist. Oh. That's a clean, clean living. She kept complimenting my mouth. They're leaning in, telling you how clean your mouth is. It feels wow. like a natural place to just, you now, know. Do they have a an opener? What do you call it? A septum piercing? Or what's that lady thing? The the, the uh, opener, clam thing? Lady opener. You Sarah? Know, no, no. The, uh, the, <laughs> you know, the thing, the speculum. Oh, I don't know the speculum. you got a type two over here, so I assume they got two ladies with bungee cords <laughs> with hooks in them pulling each side. The Philadelphia speculum. I mean, I can open my mouth, just not wide. Look at this. Speculum silver. That's nothing. I can't even get a golf ball in there. <laughs> I know. I, I'm not, I can't be gay. I don't know about that. He's still got an ass. The asshole is wider than the mouth. Yeah, that's a good point. Probably is. Dilate. I take, I've definitely taken shits that wouldn't fit in the mouth. Hmm. That is too dirty. Anyways, I went to Boston. I went back to Boston, as you know, to win Comedian of the Year. Whoa! Folks. That's right. And that's not something you can find just around the corner. I there mean, you go. Sure, there's a new one every year. But Suck it, Greg Morton. And uh, the way I got it, I really had to work hard. I had uh, my friend Dan Bulger tell the guy who runs it, why don't you give it to List? Perfect. And he said, okay. It's all about who you know. <laughs> I know Dan Bulger, baby. Yeah, Battle of the Bulge. So, uh, er. yeah, Whitey Bulger. Oh, yeah. So uh, how, how do you feel? Do you feel different? Your legs look great. Uh, you got a, new, a good dentist and a, and a comedian award. I feel like a million bucks. I mean, comedian, comedian of the year is exciting. So I go up there and uh, I get so excited. I'm like, I'm going to go up to Boston. I'll see the family, have a nice time. And I decide I'm going to go up Friday because it doesn't pay to win comedian of the year. You got sure. a plaque. There's no money. Yeah. But uh, my manager said, they'll give you a hotel for the night, and you can be part of the festival, which is fun. No and set? I go, no, no comedy? I do a set. Okay. So I say, how about, let's see if we can get the hotel for Friday and Saturday. I'll have a little Boston weekend. Throw it out there. Because, you know, other than Patriot's Day, a lot of times I do the Wilbur once a year, or this year I did Laugh Boston normally. I do Boston once a year for mm-hmm. Patriot's Day. I have that one weekend. But normally I'm going to see the family in Whitman. Yes. So I don't get to be in my favorite city that often. Bean Town, baby. And it, and it's home to me and I love it and it's just such a tremendous anyone that says anything negative about Boston is just out of their mind. They're full of shit. They're incorrect. By the way, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> Way up. The numbers of people moving to Boston are skyrocketing. No kidding. Yeah, LA's down, New York's down, all these places are down. Boston Tick well, it up. Even Everett, where I used to live, is a shithole. Is now like coming up. They have a casino there. It's oh. really wacky. Yeah. Oh well, casino that brings in good citizens. Uh, but anyway, so I go up there. I get the hotel for Friday and Saturday, and uh, it's a nice hotel. I wrote it down. Let me just double check. Oh, Giannis just texted back. Let's see if he confirmed. Uh, 
I'm there. Somehow, hey, sorry, I missed this. The, All right. The Greek there you go. freak. Hell yeah, Yanni. So, Giannis is confirmed. Now we have to pay an extra person because we hired <laughs> someone to take his place. Shit. Um, but what the fuck was the hotel? God. Greek salad. Damn it. Nice hotel, Greek too. Yogurt. Oh, the Boxer. The Boxer mm, Hotel. I don't know it. Yeah, it's a small little uh, thing. So, I'm, gonna, I'm driving up Friday and I go, I can't wait. And then I get the dreaded call. Oh, God. AIDS. Ron on Hirschberg. Uh, even worse than AIDS. He goes, hey, uh, I'm in Boston this weekend. I'm doing the <laughs> festival. We live in the same house. And you go, oh, great. Haven't we seen enough of each other? Your neighbors, for Christ jizz. I mean, I can't quit this man. So I go, great, perfect. We'll drive. That'll be fun. I can't wait. I can't quit you. Uh, but uh, no, I'm, I'm joking, of course. I love Rana. We just did a new episode of uh, Joe and Rana Talk Movies. And, uh, uh, it's back, Jack. Eh, sort of, whatever. We'll okay. see. Uh, but it was fun. So so we, I ride up with him. You love having a buddy to ride with. Oh, that helps. Always a great feeling. Now, I'm off Friday. I just wanted to be up in Boston. So I go, maybe I'll come to your show. Who's on your lineup? He tells me. I go, hey. And then I go, nah. well, maybe I'll go uh, do this. Or maybe I'll do that. So then I get, we're driving up. I forget it's game two of the NBA Eastern Conference Finals featuring the Boston Celtics. The game is in Boston. Wow. So I go, why don't I go to that? It turns out my hotel is like 200 yards from the game. Come on, look at this. So as we're pulling in, I drop off Ron on, sort of. I made him walk to his hotel. It was a long ride. Yeah, he's the Boston bomber. And I see all these Celtics people, and I go, and you know me, I can't not go. Yeah, sporting event, big in town. You got to do it. So I hit up Mike Whitman. I say, what say you come to the Celtics game with me? And he says, well, I got this gig. I would if I could. Now, how do you feel about this? Mm. And this, this is an interesting point of uh, debate, possibly. Yeah, bring it on, Fanny. You know, we, we, we look at uh, finances differently sometimes. So I say... Eh, Ian Finance. I say, hey... I'm going to bring you, and he goes, I, I, I got a show anyways, but how much does a ticket to that cost? And I go, well, I can get tick. Don't worry about the money. I, I'm doing okay. I'm the comedian of the year. Yeah. T tickets are about 350 Yeah, a little steep. It's steep. But even, I go. Wait, nosebleed even? That's the nosebleed. Oh, wow. This is the playoffs, baby. Finals. Playoffs. So I go, uh I don't care. I'm taking Whitman. I love this guy. I'm doing all right. We've been friends for 25 years. Let's go to the game. Now, that's 700 clams pre-fee. Pre-fee. So this is going to be Karen Fian. So I go, <laughs> this is going to be 750 whatever. I've had a good year. Blimp. And uh, Comedian of the year. I'm excited. So I go, fuck it. I'm taking my buddy. Daddy Warbucks. And yeah. he can't come. Oh, neither can my wife. So I go, you know what? I'll just go on my own. I've been to many sporting events by myself. I'll go by myself. And you save a couple of shekels. So you think. Oh, uh, God. So that's the thought. I is can't go, handle it. Well, I'm about to save $400 because my buddy can't come. Plus, uh, I get credit for the good deed. Yes, yes, deed. I was thinking Bulger. Bulger's a Celtic fanatic, but he was up in Maine. Mr. Deeds. So now I go, well, I was going to spend 700 bucks. Oh, God. I could save 350 bucks, or... Uh-oh. I could get a ticket twice as good as the one I have. Oh, look at you. You're letting it ride. So now I'm just pacing and pulling my hair. If you put it in a film, it would look like when uh, Henry's making the meatballs. It just keeps jump cuts where I'm like, huh, huh, Oh, yeah. 700, 350. Do I want to save the 350? But don't you find it like, because I'm like, I'm having a baby. What if I can't afford a diaper someday? We yeah. can't get rent. We're evicted. And I go, I spent 350 on a ticket. I'm a fucking idiot. Terrifying. But I had already accepted I was spending that money. Right. So why don't I upgrade? Yeah. But then I'm like, that's stupid. I can save $350. That's a flight to somewhere. Sure. You could fly to LAX from LaGuardia. But is the seat change worth it? That's what my, my point is. You get the nosebleed. We all get that's up in the rafters. It stinks. You got a binocular out there. But if you go down 10 rows for another 300 I don't know if that's worth it. Well, this isn't 10 rows. This is like on the floor. Uh, not on the floor. Okay, floor is big. So I look. I go back and forth, up and down, over and out. Finally, I just, and I'm, I'm like literally losing my mind. I'm like punching myself in the face. Yeah. And, and just shoving shoes in my ass the way I like. Sure. Stiletto. Finally, I just go for it behind the hoop, 
Row three wow. off the floor. I mean, I'm three rows behind the hoop, Jerry. Hoopty. Pinto. So I go, boop. I, just, I close my eyes. I hold my finger out. I press the stub hub. Go for it. I uh, buy a $770 ticket. And somebody at StubHub office is going, we got a live one here. <laughs> they reeled me in. in. I got duped. Dupe Monas, and finally I just go, well, whatever I got. And then immediately I'm like, my baby's going to die in the streets yes. from herpes. Yes. Because uh, I'm going to make him blow me. Sure. It happens. And uh, I'm like, what am I doing, you piece of shit? So then you have this. I know you have this. As soon as I do it, I'm like, all right, let me do push I got to do 100 push-ups. <laughs> Start, it doesn't even make that. sense. They're not even correlated. No, I'm, no. I'm doing push-ups and dips and yeah. jumping jacks and squats. I'm looking for anything to post on reels. I'm like, I got to make money. <laughs> I'm literally just taking a photo of my asshole. I'm like, I'll put that on reels. I got to upload a YouTube. You should do this more. Anytime you're like feeling lazy, just buy something expensive. Before you know it, you're, you're roofing. <laughs> this, so that's what I felt like. So then I went, okay. I've been making these videos where I do play by play and stuff. So yes. I'm like, I gotta get content. If I'm spending okay. 700 bucks, let me get content. Good Maybe call. it blows up on YouTube. Good trade. So right away, I start videotaping stuff around the streets and start doing a video, which is difficult, by the way. A lot of people, these videos have done well, but people think that I shoot it and then in post do voiceover, mm. which is very sweet that anybody thinks I know how to do that. No. I'm like full retarded person. Sure. The fact that I can cut them together on iMovie is the greatest accomplishment of my life. A miracle. So for the folks at home, yes, I am just saying this stuff next to the people. And everyone's like, there's no way he'd get beat up. But I don't think people realize you can talk into your phone like this and people can't hear you. No, there's games and music and and crowd. Yeah. So you just go like, whoa, man. I mean, every once in a while, someone's like, what's wrong with this person? Sure. But when I'm like, look at this fucking idiot. He is (laughs) 20 feet away from me. Wow. But uh, We've all seen Major League. You you, you give him a little what for. Yeah, you say whatever. And uh, so anyway, so I start doing the video. Then I'm like, I'm just going to go over there now. I'm going to go in early because I don't want to deal with the crowds and everything and so I go over there. I'm like a dork. I'm the first one because my seat is so good. Yes. I'm like, I just want to get in there. I'm like one of the first 80 <laughs> people in the fucking stadium. Wow. I go there. I sit down in my seat. You get a free towel. I grab some of those Ooh, for my niece and nephew. Yeah, you can come in it. Yeah. I get to my seat. It's squishy. There's like security being like, you don't have a seat in here. I'm like, I do. I swear to God. What? The seat is cushy. I sit down. I'm directly behind the hoop. It's like wide so like i can't i have to literally do this to see the rim it's like oh, obstructed view oh no the backboard it's like yes and the and the whole frame of the thing the the rim is blocked by the backboard so i literally oh. have to like do like a thing like this oh no but i'm close okay. i'm up there i'm up there jerry and i'm loving every minute of it can you see when they dunk you're right there Yes, I mean okay. the players are so big, but also it's I'm like off the floor, so it's like flat. So the guy in front of me, like I gotta like look away. Oh, it's not no. that great. Of a seat. Oh, rim job. But it's a great seat, but not a great seat. My father's gay. Yeah, seven hundred bucks. I'm oh, an idiot. Oh no! And I'm no. just looking in the balcony at the three hundos, and I'm like, that's nice. You get a full view exactly. and everything. And then it makes you wonder. Uh, that that actually is good content to go look at these seats. And you show the the backboard. That's funny. Well, that's what I thought. So then a guy sit. I had a bomb with a with a legend. So a guy sits in front of me, and it's just head. And so I take a photo of mostly head when you can see the players <laughs> over here. And I send it to Bur- Bill Burr, and I will text about Boston sports uh. quite a bit. And I go, bought a seven hundred dollar ticket to the game, thinking, isn't this funny? I'm behind some guy's head. Yeah. And then Burr just writes back, love it. You know how to live, my friend. He's like, you'll never regret spending that money. And I'm like, no, the joke is... The head. The head is in the way. Yeah. But he didn't even get it. He was like, that's beautiful, man. Wow. So now I feel like kind of a dork because I'm like, oh, like you thought I just was like unironically telling you I bought a $700 ticket. Yeah. So I feel like... Like it's kind of like you're bragging. Look at me. Spending money. But he was like, I love it, bro. So he took it as like, nice, man. But I thought he was going to be like, that's hilarious. Yeah. So I felt like a bombed. Boston bombing. Bomb, bomber. Oh, blow. No, a bomber. <laughs> oh, bomb back. <laughs> but yeah, backboard. No, but bomb backboard. The video came out great. There Check it out. Go. It's on my YouTube. And then the Celtics. So then it's like a barn bird. And then there's all these slips. Uh, like Shaquille O'Neal and Charles ooh, Barkley are over there for TNT. Shut up and dribble. And then the rapper Ludacris is right over there. Hey, I don't know anything about Ludacris. He could come in I here. Him. I wouldn't know him. Hate him. Do you? I don't like him. I saw him at Jazz Fest. He oh, phoned it right. in. He trashed the city. 
big, big, uh, big enemy. Well, he was there, and I, of course, I was like this guy. I, I had to reach to these like college creeps, being like, "Who's the fellow over there?" And he uh. says, "Ludacris." And of course, I'm like this. Ludacris is uh. here, everybody. <laughs> so then, listen to this one, and I don't want to disparage. Move, bitch, get out the way. I don't want people to take this the wrong way, and sound like I'm trashing a comedian because it's a comedian I, I respect, but. Uh-oh. I sit down in my seat, 700 bucks. Shaquille O'Neal is over there, Charles Barkley, Antoine Walker, all these mm. Celtics legends. Mike Gorman, who's like Hall of Fame broadcaster for the Celtics. I grew up with him. He's sitting right in front of wow. me. He's right there. And I'm You'll, like, what well, legend? You like saying Gorman, don't you? It's fun to say <laughs> Gorman. And uh, the, the players are right there. The coaches are right there. I sit in my seat and I say, I'm accepting. I yeah. spent this 700 bucks. I got the money. I'm making a funny video. Let's go, Celtics. I settle into my big seat. I got my towel. I text everyone I know. Look at these. I'm texting with Marill. I'm texting with Derek. Going, look at these fucking seats, baby. Celtics. Yeah. About two minutes happen. Go by. And I see a security guys Uh-oh. in a suit walking along the floor. It's comedian Alex Edelman, <laughs> who's about 25 years younger than me. He started 30 years later. He gets escorted to floor seats. Wow. Ruined the whole night for me. Wow. I'm like, I'm like, and I, I like Alex. He's, he's a, a very funny comedian. Guy. He's kicking ass. He's a, he's a celebrity. He's huge. He's, he's, he was in town doing a theater. I didn't even know he was big. He's I mean, no big. offense. Good yeah. for him. Oh, he's big, but you feel like, look at this. It's all from comedy. Look at me. I finally made it. Top of the shelf. A number one. King of the Hill. Yes. And here comes a comedian who's 11 years old and yeah. just gets escorted by security. He's neck, He's on the bench, this guy. Wow. He almost got in. He, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, Keep your towel on. The whole th- I'm not even watching the game. I'm just staring. I'm like, God. That is second wild. place. Yes. I bet he didn't pay 700 for that. No, he probably got escorted in by the owner. I don't know what happened. I think they gave him 700 to come by. But his feet were in play. The ref had to be like, you got to move your shoe, Jeez. your comedy shoe. He's, the, he's doing the Larry David. He's out there. <laughs> feet on the court. I mean, he fucked me, this guy. Man, that's hilarious. Uh, Oh, woo, boy. Ruined my whole night, but that was fun. We made a fun video. Uh, Who else was there? I don't know. I think that was it for that. Well, uh, it's going to be hard to follow Edelman if you're talking celebrities. (laughs) (laughs) Ludacris, Charles Barkley, Antoine Walker, Shaquille O'Neal, Mike Gorman, Alex Edelman, and then, of course, all the players. Sure, uh, sure. Jimmy Buckets is there, of course, and all that stuff. Hey, bucket list. Uh, Jason Tatum, all the boys. Tatum O'Neal. And then... Well, the worst part is Celtics are up 12 in the fourth quarter. Jungle's rocking. Everyone's going crazy. They blow the lead. They lose the game. So then not only do you spend 700 bucks, I got obstructed view. Edelman <laughs> beat me. The Celtics lose. And <laughs> you just go, I, I got to take my own life here. Yeah, yeah. It's a $700 loss. Just horrible. But yeah. uh, check but- out the video. Go. It's Joe List goes to the Celtics playoffs or something. It's got 4,000 views. I can't wait to see the video. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. I got a bunch of videos on there. Please subscribe and and, and uh, don't worry, if 300,000 people more watch it, I'll uh, almost make my money back. There we go. <laughs> yeah, well, you're a hell of a person of color commentator. You're really good at it. The people like it. The people have spoken. The play-by-play boy, I call myself. Hey. So then Saturday comes around, and it's just rain all day. That's the word. When you're like, I have a day in my favorite city. Yeah. Forecast all day rain. I hate the rain. Rain oh. on my parade. I went to uh, fucking Amsterdam for my honeymoon. It rained the whole time. We got divorced. I remember, yeah. But uh, so it's raining all day. I hit up Ron on. But then you know what we did? I felt good about. It. I said, let's just walk in the rain. Woody Allen does it in his movies. Get the umbrella from the hotel. Got a rain jacket. Walked all around. We had a great time. We went to a cigar lounge. Great one in the North End. We went there together before with ah. Alvin and Bulger oh, years yeah. ago. Oh yeah, that very nice spot. Had a cigar, and I gotta give uh, give uh, props to Ron on because a lot of times you bring a non cigar guy to a cigar mm. place, and they're like I'll try one. They get a. $50 cigar, they throw up blood, they smoke yeah. a tenth of it. He smoked the whole cigar, we had a great talk, great hang. Ronan's a fun hang. Good egg and, and a, an insightful guy. He Every time I talk to him, I go, that's good, I never thought of it that way. He's, yeah. he's good point man. Big thinker and a hilarious comic. Check out Joe and Ronan. My YouTube is chocked full of fun. And uh, great hang. Then I had to go over to the Majestic Theater for the festival and I'm getting this Ooh. award, which is exciting. Brian Kiley, who oh, we love. Brilliant writer. One of our favorites. Uh, and a, a bit of a beefcake. He's ripped. Big beefcake. His son played pro baseball. What? Got to meet him. He was winning Lifetime Achievement Award. Ooh, I like that. He had his whole family there. And I got to tell you, so 
the the show is the f- contest, the final of the contest, the Boston County ah, yes. competition. You ever do it? Uh, many times. Yeah. Twice. I hadn't done it in a long time. It used to be a huge deal when huge. I was a boy. I would take the uh, fun wah back and forth. Absolutely. It was a big, big deal. I, it, it started the year I started doing comedy, so we kind of like started together. Mm. And, um, Bulger famously won it when he was like 11. Yes, I remember where I was. It was like Kennedy being shot. I yeah. was in the green room at City Steam. Wow. It might have been when we did the weekend. To, no, uh, it, was before, it was way before that. What am I talking about? I didn't even know you. It was like, oh, four. No, I was I was a child. But I remember being like, Dan Ball. He was 19 years old. Yes. And I was like, what? <laughs> that fucking guy. I mean, he was literally a kid. A kid. He, he quit college like the next day. I yeah. Heard. He had seven in it. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that was not good. My hymen broke. That sounded like a snapper. You get at a parade. Yeah, that hurt, too. I don't know what I just pulled. Oh. That was a ligament. I, that wasn't even a fart. <laughs> oh. That sounded like a TV got turned off. It was like... <laughs> Replay that back later. I'm dying to hear it. Um, oh, I think something happened. But any jizz. So the contest... So it's weird because you're at the finals of the contest. So all these comedians are walking around all nervous and sure. scared. It's a big day. And I'm, I'm winning my plaque. And uh, I have no plaque. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so my my Uncle Dale oft mentioned Uncle Dale. Back to plaque. He goes, hey, I, I got to come uh, come see this. And I go, well, it's no big deal. I'm doing seven minutes. You're at the Wilbur. And this is touching. Black Panther. He said, "Who was it? Uncle Dale came to my, we, we, he graduated from the fire department academy, the fire academy, the same week I did my first set. So our careers are parallel. Yes. Came to my first show ever. How do you like that? At Chops Lounge. And I said, no, no, this isn't a big deal. It's like a, it's a fake prize. Nobody's coming. I don't care. My father's gay. And he goes, I don't know, you're getting an award for comedy in Boston. I'm going. Oh, what a guy. That's what a touching. Uncle. He's your the anti the Steve list. He really touched my, my dick when I was a kid and sure. I'm over it now. Oh, fireman, you can do worse. <laughs> he likes a hose. Great Great forearm, very buff. Oh, yeah, he's got Popeye on him. He's a strong man. But anyways, so he comes, and uh, and his wife, Heather, who I also love, and they came, which touched my heart. And then the whole cast of Fourth of July, not the whole cast, but many of the cast members from Fourth of July, the film. Hey, that's appropriate. Day of. On Fourth of July. 32% Rotten Tomatoes. Check it out. Born on Fourth of July. Very high rating. Yeah. Um, but uh, they all came, and it, it touched my heart. And then I had to follow Kylie. He's getting a Lifetime Achievement. He gave a speech, and I mean... A speech. Yeah. It was touching and moving and made me love comedy and reflect on comedy. And it's interesting because he started, I think, in 85 in Boston. But none of those Boston guys ever left. So his story parallels mine. Wow. Same with Louie. He's like, I was 20 years old. I went in. I met Tony V and Don Gavin and Kevin Knott and like all the same guys I started with. So it was really making me... Feel the emotion. Yeah, this is a big deal. Babo Kylie. And such a great guy. And he didn't do material, though. I wish he did. Ah. His, his, his jokes, the crowd would have been relieved to hear some bits. Got it. Um, Enough so, said. So uh, then I went up after him, and uh, I did. The, they said I was supposed to do eight. I think I did like 14, <laughs> which I've never gone over in my life. And I didn't see the light, but I was having such a great time. The crowd was hot. It was really fun. I was touched to get the award. And then a little bit sad. There was no hang or party after. That's kooky. That that's new in comedy. It's very new. I was like, "Where's everyone going?" And they were like, "Ah, oh, no, we're going. Uh, we're going uh, home." Yeah, they look at their phones. And there's no connection. Yeah, it was a little weird. And then I was like, "I'm gonna go meet Ronan." And then his gig was further away than I realized. And uh, he he didn't come back. And then I thought I was gonna meet up with Mike Whitman, and he ended up not being around. Mm. So I kind of just. Uh, Sat in my hotel with my plaque. Meh. But went and saw the family the next day. But anyways, it was, I was touched to win the award. It was a, a fun night. Kylie, well-deserved. Yes. And what a beautiful man. And uh, it, it, was, it was fun to feel part of that and the, the connection with him. And uh, so I'm grateful to the Boston Comedy Festival. But I got to tell you, I'm like, we got to get back to the... The hang. The party. Yes. I mean, it used to be an event. And everyone's disconnected and splintered. They all do their own thing. It's a, it's a real bummer. But let me ask you this. Uh, the plaque. What mm-hmm. do you? You got that on the mantle? You got it up? Are you proud of it? Does it look nice? Uh, it's just kind of no, no. We didn't yeah, it. that's that's what I was getting at. Is awards for comedian? They're they're not. 
I have that some award I won the Great American, whatever the hell. Oh yeah, I was there for that. It's got more dust on it than my wife's clit. Yeah, it's um, it's cool, you know. I, yeah. Yeah. But well, I think part of it is it's, I don't want to I don't want to take away. No, from the don't take honor, away. But it was a thing. It wasn't like there's a commission that everyone voted. Right. It was like, right. oh yeah. Yeah, we'll give it to him. All right, but it's still nice to be recognized. So I appreciate it. Yeah, my cousin got me a card. It was nice, and uh, it feels good, but, you know. And then what do you do is my other question, because I'm an idiot. What, what do you do with the, uh, as a sober queef? Uh-huh. You got the night off, Ronan's in uh, Braintree or whatever the hell. You got no booze. What do you do? You go back and watch a film, okay. jerk off, maybe I meditate, Okay. check the numbers on that video. I yeah, yeah. Didn't know. <laughs> well, that's one thing about us. I feel like we can, uh, we're not, we don't get bored. No. I can look at a video, I can go on the internet, I can jerk off, I can eat my own ass. I'm yeah. good. I read. And then uh, I got up the next morning, walked around. The next day was beautiful, so I did a long walk around the city, went to a meeting, saw some peeps that I know, and uh, it was it was touching. It just it, it touches. It hits different at home. You know oh, yeah. I mean? For you, uh, what's it called? Crawdaddy Fest or whatever? Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras and uh, Patriot's Day. You just go home. It, it touches your heart and your fart. You hear the accent. You see the old friends, and it... It's such a huge part of who you are and, and where you came from. It really it moves you. Here, here. All right. Well, thanks, Bean Town. And we're sitting here with a uh, an award winner. So yeah. that, that's exciting. And uh, I think we're about 108. Hey! Oh, Holy my God. Kiss tits. 108. Yay. She whiz. Woo-wee. All right. Well, uh, I'm all over the road. I, I My tickets are dwindling, folks. So uh, can we pick up the you don't say uh I'm all I'm all over August, all over September. I'm going to Europe, going to the UK, Dublin, Scotland. We'll have to figure out scheduling there, but it's not that long. And uh, ah, who cares? Let's quit. All right, Berlin and uh, Copenhagen. But yeah, coming to LA, coming to uh, all kinds, of San Diego, all kinds of places. So uh, say hello. Go. It's on my website. Get a mug. Go gay. We got some new stuff on the Patreon cooking. Where do they even get a mug? I have no idea. Give it a goog. <laughs> Uh, Mug Costanza, and where where are you at there, Fatty? Um, next weekend, I am in Irvine, as mentioned, July 12th to the 15th. The weekend after that, San Jose, July 19th to the 21st. August is crazy. Providence Comedy Connection, the 3rd through the 5th. Uh, Nashville, I'm coming to Dallas Improv. Nice. Um, Zanies, one night only, September 6th, I think it is, in between Pearl Jam shows out there in Chicago. And then um, uh, Cobbs in San Ooh. Francisco that weekend, September. Crazy weekend. I'm going to Chicago. Pearl Jam, Zanies, Pearl Jam, Cobbs, Cobbs. Wow, that's a, that's a showbiz week right there. And then a big one, because uh, Philadelphia is one of our big markets for yes. us. Uh, Helium, October 5th through the 7th. And that's my last work before I have a child, for God's uh, sake. So oh please. Oh my God, what a sentence. Wouldn't mind getting into that percentage deal down there. So please buy some tickets. Buy early and often, if you know what I mean. And how, well, I think we got a live Tuesdays going on over there at some point. August 28th? Second. August 22nd. Oh, okay, how do you um, like them apples? In uh, Philadelphia. Please get those tickets, grab those up. And um, and join the Patreon. Patreon, we just keep putting more fucking shit on there. It's killer. It's a, basically its own channel. Well, what do you got there, Chuck Rooney? Check out my podcast, Fun Bearable. Newest episode has Mike Cannon on. Hey. And he talks about how he knocked his dad out. I don't oh, know if you cool. do know that story. I no, I don't know that story. It's, it's, I don't listen when Mike talks. It's, it's pretty rough. It's a good story. He's really funny. It's a great episode. And then... Uh, Check out Alan Fitzgerald's new special, Straight for Pay. I directed that, and it came out this week. Oh, oh yeah, you cool. did some of his bits for us one time. It was very funny. Yeah, Alan Fitzgerald is killer. You can just look for it on YouTube. It's free. Just look up Straight for Pay. Um, Fitzy. Yeah, good stuff. Hey, I'm gay for pay. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you all in hell. Praise Allah. And God bless America. Oh, yeah.